We'll take calls to the Lord Mayor. Sue, go ahead, please, Sue. Oh, good morning, Mr Mayor. Hello, um, Sue. I just want to congratulate you on your win at the next election. You've got oh. it in the bag. Oh, no, no, please, you... Sue, Sue, don't help me like that. That's, oh, no, that's, no, like, no. that's, like, Did, that's like the no. black cat of politics. No, it's not. Did you hear the interview yesterday with your opposition? I mean, lunatic, absolute <laughs> lunatic. She wants to take out all the cameras, well, invasion no. of privacy. Oh, oh, Mr Mayor, you're home and hose. We're oh, well. talking about, I interviewed Dr Olivia Ball yesterday, the yeah. Greens candidate for mayor and council. Are you trembling? Uh, I, I didn't hear it, sorry. Well, she was talking about various things. She's worried about the dog boxes on the Monash. Right. Which actually she meant Docklands okay. and CityLink. But she, the other thing that uh, she said, very few city councillors live in the municipality, was critical of that. And we're talking, I asked her where she stands on closed circuit television. We're launching a policy on our CCTV policy in a, in a couple of weeks and I can't preempt that. Uh, but we okay. we need to uh, keep the right to privacy as a, as a primary concern. Right to privacy for everybody. Everybody has a right to privacy. Yes. Even the crooks. I'm a human rights advocate, as you'd be aware. So human rights are a primary concern of mine. Even the crooks. Of course, Neil. The human rights mean nothing if uh, crooks, as you say, uh, are not also accorded equal human rights. Do you defend the human rights of crooks? It's not, that's not the way angle I would take. <clears throat> I, I think it's important that privacy is protected and there are rules around CCTV that, that do that. You know, only police or the courts can have access to it. It's destroyed after a period of time unless it is being used in a prosecution. But I will defend the use of CCTV and the extension of CCTV in the city. It is just a crucial tool in identifying uh, perpetrators, in prosecuting them. But if you look at the audits and we make those public, you know, the number of times we actually avoid crime because our operators operating 24 hours a day, you know, every day of the year can see when trouble is happening, switch that vision to the police, police respond. We actually, I think, prevented a very serious crime uh, down in Enterprise Park where we saw a man chasing another um, carrying a knife. And, and we actually alerted police. They arrested the perpetrator. And if you look at the audits, it shows you the number of arrests that are made because our vision has been made available to police. So it's not just a reactive thing. It can be proactive. They're highly sophisticated. And look, look yes, we protect privacy. But to be honest... Realistically, anywhere you go now, don't worry about the city CCTV. Every shop, you know, many residences, they're, they're all through cities now. It's not about whether we have them or not. It's about having the appropriate yeah. protection and then using them as a tool against crime. And members of the public got them trained on the street too. As we Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the police asked you know. for it the other day. Oh, the other thing she raised, which is interesting, is that very few city councils actually live in the municipality of Melbourne. Shouldn't local government be run by locals? Well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, in, in suburban councils, I can see that that would have a value. But, you know, in the city itself, I mean, we've all got an office or something like that. So we have a connection to city that is not, you know, the city is not just about residents. In fact, the majority of the rates are paid by businesses. And, and we give votes to those people and people who take leases. So a residential qualification is not the only qualification for council. You'd be ruling out business entirely otherwise. And I would have thought that's not the right thing to do. Look, some people do and that's great, but that's kind of ward thinking and uh, that's not the way I would approach it. I mean, I live just outside the municipality, uh, but I have an office in the municipality. So I would say that I have a right to represent the city of Melbourne and that's what the rules say. So, no, I don't think you, you necessarily have to live there, but I think you must have, and in fact, you have to have an entitlement uh, to be on the role of the city and, and that to me is, is reasonable. 